or contentious at all. <laughs> no, I don't think Hopefully. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what did you want to talk about today? Well, I've been a fan of the show. Uh, I've been an atheist for many years. I'm 33. Congratulations. I, was, uh, I had a speech. <laughs> No, well, uh, you're going to maybe feel differently about that in a second, but mm. I had a uh, a seizure in September last year I'm sorry and found that. a brain tumor. Oh, thank you. And I had it operated on pretty quickly, and I've been uh, I've been healing at home. I'll be ready to go back to work, luckily, uh, in March. Mm. But uh, That's a fast recovery time, actually. But, well, sorry. Um, yeah, it was a, thank you. But uh, what I'm trying to get at, and I, I don't want to, you know, sob story anything what i'm trying to get at man is i've you know my wife is we've been married 13 years she's christian well mm-hmm. she's religious she's spiritual and uh my dad is the same way i thought he was christian but after we've been talking i've been talking to a lot of my christian friends and uh you know family members because uh i came home man and i'm on medication it makes me real anxious and uh i couldn't sleep for several days and my wife recommended just try to try to pray which i did and it worked for me as far as calming me down. I was able to sleep, and I've, since then, I you know, this is early December. Since then, I've been I've been praying every day, just about. Uh, and uh, you know, man, I'm I, I still have the atheist in me. Where I'm, I'll tell you, I don't I don't know what God is or what my definition would be, other than to I have mm-hmm. ideas of frequencies. You know, as far as I believe, there might be some sort of frequency out there that everybody's capable of tapping into. These are ideas, man. These are not... All right, uh, so I, I, I can very much understand uh, where the frequency language may have come from, where it's like frequency and vibratory... Mm-hmm. Energy. And ...levels of consciousness and, and energy are um, perfect fodder for providing um, nice-sounding quasi, but mostly non-explanations for existence. So... What I would right. advise generally, and I definitely want you to, well, I definitely want to hear updates as this goes along. What I would provide is um, looking into what the best ways of understanding reality and, and specifically human biology, neurology, and you know, psychology, and mm-hmm. um, you're engaging in an action and it is having a, a psychological effect, right? Um, I feel like having the best possible understanding of the human mind and the way it works and um, these things from a method that I think, I'm going to go ahead and assume and ask the question now, you know, a scientific examination of these things is probably the best way to come to a reliable conclusion. Is that... Sure, and, and yeah. I really wanted you guys' perspective. Uh, like I yeah. said, I'm a fan of the show. I, I've, I haven't, I've gotten out of it as far as watching it for a while, and uh, I was a big yeah. fan of Matt and Tracy and Russell mm-hmm. and those guys. So I don't know you two, and I apologize. I've been oh. listening, and you handled that guy pretty well. I should have hung up on him a lot sooner in, in <laughs> the regards that he was being very repetitive, and, he, and yeah. we could all see where he was going with it. And yeah. well, I think uh, the script, like you said, if, yeah. and I don't mean to tell you how to do your job. I apologize. I was just <laughs> you're fine. We, to, I'll, I'll always take advice. Um, additionally, but, uh, uh, we talked. We just talked to EF for more than an hour. I'm not going to cut you off after five seconds. Um, the uh, th- the thing that I would say, as far as your particular question is. The human mind is a weird sort of squishy, wet work thing of a computer. That's sort of like the closest it could be described as, um, you know, and an, uh, our understandings of electric computing. Um, well, do, you believe, do you believe that, that, do you believe that your experience uh, with prayer is evidence of the existence of, for example, a god? I wouldn't. I, I, I'm calling it God because that's what everybody else around right. me calls it, yeah. and it's comfortable. And I, you know, and I can tell you, I don't have a definition for what God is, other than, you know, when I close my eyes and I'm imagining. Like I said, is, I understand it could be that meditation could be just as beneficial. But for me, uh, what potentially, but for me, what's worked is this. Yeah. And I just wondered what you guys think about the power of prayer, as far as even if, I, the, even if it's not, even if it's just shutting your mind off and praying and. Yeah. and so, and, and I guess more deeply what I want to get to is the idea that religion, religious books, texts, so these old books, these ancient books, they do have, they be, if, if we don't look at them as being literally true, which I don't, you know, as my dad was a good. Christian and he's kind of talked his way into where I'm telling him, I didn't even know what this was. I wouldn't have known until I started looking it up, mm-hmm. but I guess I would consider myself more of an ominous right now. 
I don't know if you guys know what that is. I'm sure you do. Uh, but, uh, I, I'm actually not familiar with that specific word. Is it similar to a pantheist, well, but I, without a specific claim about uh, God? It's not really. It's There's different ways. The way I choose to describe it is that all religions, as far as all ancient books, have but to have a but you know have, they have truths in them, but they are and there's not one religion mm-hmm. that is all that is true. Okay, so so I'm familiar with that as an idea. So so what I would say is, okay, uh, do you think that your experience engaging in you know prayer? One, I I believe that acts of meditation and self reflection, whether they take the form of prayer to a god or gods in one or more traditions can have an effect on the human mind because it's the human mind acting on itself is my, my specific answer to that question. Um, wh- uh, where I would go from that is, do you think that those experiences of taking your mind and acting upon itself are a good justification for drawing conclusions about things that exist outside of your mind? Yeah, as far as the concretely, no. Um, right. well, so, I, and I think that's why I wanted to. Yeah. Uh, is, is what I wanted to get at more is, and I, and I feel like you, you've had these questions. I don't know. I know I'm not the first person. To They're ask, still good questions. It, yeah. Is it okay to? Is it okay that? Because I, I came to the conclusion I used to, you know, get in these arguments all the time, especially with family members, you know, because I was an atheist and had bad experiences through church. And I still don't think churches. I don't think most religions are. <laughs> are yeah, man. I'm, I'm talking long hair and beards, and they would say you're going to burn in hell. They would, mm. I was very, very question. I questioned everything as a child, and the, the church I went to, they were very rude to me. And I, by the time I was 11, I was already what I would consider as non-religious, but I wouldn't say I was an atheist until I learned what an atheist was. I thought atheist was this horrible thing. Yeah. High school, I learned what it was, and I identified as that. You know, this was years ago, and I've been doing this. I've been in this mindset for a long time and I still have that mindset is I don't even know what I would, I, I just don't think, I, I just look at it as, you know, and I, I know y'all have heard this, please don't make fun of me, but as far as God, I would call it love and I, mm. and I, and, and therefore you don't even need to call it God. Right. I just happen to, it happens to help me to pray yeah. to God, what I call God. And it's more or less putting good vibes out. And that's how I say it. You know, when I have yeah. family, friend, family and friends that need help, I'll, I just want to send vibes and positive vibes, yeah. thoughts and love their way. And well, j- just, and like you said, man, it's, it might just be in my mind. I realize this, but uh, I think some people, and like I said, this is going to be goofy, but I think some people do need God. I think there are people out there. I'm not saying I'm one of them. I, I felt like I was a good person. And the, the feedback I've gotten from friends and family since this has happened would prove that to be the case for me that uh, I had a lot of love and a lot of support come my way, you know, thankfully. And, uh, these are from people that were religious that knew I was an atheist. So I knew I was, I know I'm doing things right. As far as I live my life the right way. As That's an atheist. Good. That's I'm not, I'm not trying important. to say atheists can't live their life. I, I know that there are atheists and if they're, that, that, <laughs> that could go to heaven if, you know, well, I just know it. I, so, I don't believe the, the so, God I believe in it. It's my God, right? I know y'all have probably heard this. Yeah, so, my God. So, so James, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in here a, a little bit because you've you yes, touched sorry. on a few points. Um, I think one of the points that you touched on was, I think there are some people that need to believe in a God. Um, you yes. touched on uh, sending out good vibes. Uh, you said specifically, that's how I describe it. Um, I think that both of those things are an exercise in the, the power of the human mind and the power of human social interaction when you're, when you're talking about other people. Um, as a quick clarifying question, when you say you send out good vibes, do you mean that you believe that prayer or the activation of these vibes in your mind is likely to change physical aspects of reality? I think in a way, and this is where it'll get woo-woo. Out, outside of a person's then, mind is what I mean, right? So like, could, could you send out good vibes? No, to- no, no. Okay. Uh, well, it would that, be with the person. It would be like, because when I prayed, man, and I, I prayed as a child, and that's one of the reasons you stopped believing. I, th- I think I stopped believing and, yeah. and came to the realization that, you know, religion, and especially these books, there's too much wrong with it to take it literally true. But I feel mm-hmm. that if we were to read the Bible as a textbook, as academically try to approach it, like, uh, you know, the Greek mythologies, and we were, and not just the Bible, all religions, because I've been looking into Hinduism a little bit and Buddhism. If we were to read them, and I think they hold value, and that's the most important thing. I think they still hold value if we do it right. If we're teaching that, hey man, no, Noah didn't get swallowed by a whale. You know, there's not, not big fish. Man, 
Sorry, that's the yes, they always say that. Not some as if big fish is more plausible. But sorry, sorry, yeah, I that man. I shouldn't. I, don't have know, I, I know I'm ranting. I have no, been you, doing this a lot. Yeah, you've, you've, I, you've, I, you've, you've, you've got a lot rants. to say. But here, hold on. I think Thomas had a thing he wanted I, to respond. I think that I would agree oh. with you largely in that there there are elements of holy books that you can take that are beneficial. The where it becomes problematic, and and I'll go back through, and I I might find you know, quotes from the Bible or from, you know, the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita or, or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I might, right, right. I might read through them and be like, hey, like there is something in here that was actually really good. The, the, difference, yeah. the difference is that as an atheist, I'm able to go through and choose the bits that I like and throw out the bits that aren't. And I make it better. When when Thomas Jefferson you know wrote the Jeffersonian Bible and took out all of the miracles and all the pseudoscience and, and stuff and was just left with certain passages that he liked, he made it better. And there are elements of the the Bible that are incredibly immoral, and in other holy books, the Quran, that are incredibly immoral. And yes. I think as long as we it, if you take it literally, right? I don't. Yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off, but right, if you're taking it like this is these are real stories, or yeah. even but even if as this is. is well, if you take Even, Jack and the Beanstalk literally, um, <laughs> it, it's a little bit immoral that he just found a place where there was a bunch of money and he went up there and he stole stuff. And then when they tried to get it back, he killed them by cutting off the Beanstalk. Um, I, I mean, well, you could try and argue the morality of hurting giants, but the laws, yeah. the edicts, and the, mm. the fact that, you know, if you say, well, the Bible's a great book, well, if you keep saying that to people without clarifying that it's, you know, it has its good and it has has its bad stuff in it, and it's not literal. And we should be able to use, you know, That's our, the main our thing judgment. It has as good as bad. I agree, and I'm, I know I'm talking again. I'm sorry. Well, That's where it, okay. just to finish the thought, where it becomes super problematic is that you have the Bible itself saying that it is the literal word of God, mm-hmm. and you have people there. who believe that. And when you pass it around That's and say, true. "Here's this great book, you should read it," and without that clarification. You're going to have people that pick it up and they read from, you know, the, the ancient uh, Hebrew law and they'll say, oh, well, we should uh, put to death homosexuals and anyone who's not a virgin on their wedding night. I know. I know. Awful. That's awful. You're right. And that's why I think I didn't know what an ominous was until I looked it up. I was curious if any churches, because I was interested in all religions and just wanted to learn more and, I, and do it academically and not do it as truth. And uh, I was wondering if there were any churches that that studied all books and then tried to learn from all the books. And of course not. There was a library I found that does. And then I found the terminology of, of an omnist. And that's kind of where I'm at. I feel omnist, you know. Well, I mean, I do that. I do that as an atheist. I study all the different holy books and um, see what I can gleam of benefit and see what I can uh, refute and, and, you know, well, then you might could be able to classify yourself as an omnist as well. Then I well, suppose, I, I, uh, I, where, where I would where I would say no is I and and again like your your definition of ominous, I'm I'm assuming that you mean like um, someone who holds that all religions have elements of truth to them, uh, or like, like yes. om, omni, like kind of like everything. No, that, I mean I, I could be misunderstanding the pronunciation as far as but how I would you know label myself classify myself I. I'm still an agnostic. I still don't claim knowledge of knowing, but I, I like good. the idea that that uh, I like it when I pray. I felt something, and and yeah. you know the best way to describe it is love. Like when my wife hugs me, or when people came to visit me in the hospital, I get that tingle. When I and I had never and I hadn't really? prayed in years, anyways. When I prayed and it and I got that feeling, I felt man, this it helped me sleep, and it still helps me at times. And even if like I, I know you guys are right, it's, it could just be in my mind. I and I uh, battle with that inside so, myself. So, well, so here's I what feel, I would say is I is. Feel that, in in either case, it, it is in your mind, right? And so here's what I'm going to say. Um, this has a certain utility for you that is tremendous. Right. And that is why I think it is – that is one of the major parts of why I think it is uh, worth pursuing. So if you look at the development okay. of techniques, whether it's physical martial arts or an understanding of the world, of human beings understanding and improving things, throughout the entirety of our history, we have either – failed to systematically examine them and therefore not improve to the degree that we could or as with the you know application of modern science just over 200 years ago we have started to radically understand and be able to uh, uh, utilize better reality laws of motion the steam engine etc so if i told you that there are people that study spirituality parts of the mind without appealing to gods or traditions from back when people didn't know that germs exist, 
and I told you that if you learn more about this in a systematic and scientific way, you will be able to better utilize what your mind is doing. You'll be able to improve the degree to which an act of meditation or prayer helps you. And I would encourage you to do that because that's good, if this that's is good, useful, right? no, no, no. make it more I useful. That. This is good, I've, I've make been, it been, better. A fantastic example, I've been real quick. Sort of doing that. I, to, I've been sort yeah. of doing that, I guess, as far as, uh, yeah, you've, I so, think you nailed it a little bit for well, me there. To yeah, layer, kind of to layer real quick, to, to give some validity yeah. what Jamie, to what Jamie's saying, is mm-hmm. that there was a guy, I believe he was a neuroscientist, and he had his own fMRI machine. And he started actually getting real-time feedback whenever he would meditate inside the fMRI machine. And they had done brain scans of, you know, Tibetan Buddhist monks who, you know, they're they're reaching these high levels of, you know, they've spent decades of their life meditating and they reach this point where they can just really reach this state of mindfulness and their their heart rate drops and they're just focused and they're relaxed and stress-free. And he was able to reach that state in a matter of weeks just because he was getting the real-time feedback with the visual um, fMRI machine. Yeah. And so it's like the, we're learning more and more about what causes the brain to enter these different types of states, which is phenomenal. Now, prayer, you, you know, it might make you feel fantastic, similar to meditation, it, but it's like you feel like you're not alone. You feel like, you know, there's yeah, there's someone out there that will help you. Well, the problem with that is it might make you feel better. It might be therapeutic, kind of like a placebo, but there isn't someone out there to help you in that sense. There are people, though, who will instead, they will write down in a journal and they'll, they'll you know, write in their diary and they feel like they're putting it out into the world. They'll feel better. Or they'll take it a step further and they'll blog and they'll write out their situation and, and just put it up on a website. And then it's even more likely that, you know, some stranger might come along and be like, oh, man, your situation sucks. Like, I put together a GoFundMe to help you or, you know, hey, what can I do? Like, and they'll send you an email and they'll they'll talk to you on the phone or something. So then you're actually doing something that is therapeutic in the same way that fa- that prayer is but you're actually you know you're putting your thoughts out there into the world where other people can find it and see it and we can help each other now i'm not saying that they will respond necessarily they may not even find it you might not get any traffic on your site you know if it's not being shared around um, or they might see it and it just doesn't really strike an emotional chord with them and, and it's not really their problem, so they might not respond. But it's more effective than just prayer. I'm not saying prayer on its own, like as long as you know. I know what you mean. I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, the value is cognitive. Um, what I would recommend a- as, a, as a way of, because um, we, we, we need to jump on our last call and, and hop off, um, I'm getting definitely not passive aggressive messages from my producer. But. Um, <laughs> These, he's great. They're, they're good, and I've been on the show for too long. Um, what I will say is, well, I, uh, among other sources, I, I believe that Sam Harris has been very interested in looking at, um, I think, I, I'm not like sure whether Sam. he uses the phrase secular spirituality. He definitely uses the word spiritual, but it is effectively... Yeah, he's using the Buddhism, right? Yeah, it, bit, I, I mean, really, it should be examining what the human mind can do to itself, and I feel like he comes... Uh, at that from a good angle. I honestly haven't spent enough time looking at this, but that's the, the where book, I started. Wake, waking Up waking is a up good is start. A good one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've read it. I, I'm a fan of Sam's. Uh, yeah. Big fan of Hitchens. Uh, big fan of your show. And uh, I needed you to tell me that. I've been spending a lot of time researching uh, re- different religions, and maybe I should be researching the mind, uh, being that mine was just uh, had a piece of it cut out. But uh, no, man, I, I feel I feel the. Well, the, I there's no feel, reason why you I've always can't kind of, read even it. as an atheist, I felt like this that the books they, if you're taking them literal and if you're teaching them and you live your life like these are the rules to live by, you know, and like I said, stony unruly children, all these things, that's awful. But if you were to take it and we were to approach, because these are these books if have been around for a long time and, and, and tradition. Yeah, to take it. Yes, to take it more philosophically and to take it and break it down, because I think there is wisdom. I think there are lessons to be learned from the Bible if you're learning the right way. So, and I think, and it's not just the Bible. That's I think all you know, all religious texts. They've been around for a long time. They've helped people to what I would call enlightenment, as far as spirituality. I know, woo woo. Well, Matt yeah. Dillon, so, honey, would so, my butt for saying that, but yeah. I'm saying no. I, I they, they, there's a past to what I would call enlightenment and the right way to live. And I think these books, if utilized properly, and that's why I'm you know I, so, more or less so here's, to look here's at where the, here's the slight, how do you feel about that though? So so here's the as far slight as using divergence. Them literally, like, yeah, so, so, so here's our slight divergence, uh, James, is that I don't think that there's anything uh, specific or inherent that makes a book that is used for a religion 
I don't think that that puts it in a different category of literature than well, a book that old, is not. It, so, for example, I can it, put the Bible, uh, you know, next to Lolita on the shelf. And to me, those two things can be read and understood and should be read and understood from the same approach. Well, I would even say yep. that the second one would be would have more yeah. weight because um, well, the author is a Nobel Prize winning, you know. Well, I, there's that. But but it's also, I, I oh, do not think the, there's any the, special quality to religious scripture over other words on a page. I think I that think, I think you can you use the myths and, and... In one regard, man, in, in one, I, I don't, and I'm talking over you because I know you got to get over with the call, yeah. but I, I, I know where you're going with it. And I'm saying, I understand that, but I'm saying, I mean, I thought I was going to die. And uh, I think this happens to a lot of people. They go somewhat spiritual. And I, like I said, I'm still considering myself an agnostic. I still have a, I still argue atheist points of view. I'm not calling myself a Christian, but I'm, what I'm saying is I, I just feel that there is good in it. It, it. It's a different kind of good, and it might be spiritual, what I'm calling spiritual, but maybe it's just intellectual behavior. It's the way to treat people. It's the, it, and I think they do offer something more valuable than a book like Lolita. And, I, and I'm not just saying the Bible. I'm saying they all possibly do to whatever, because, you know, they are across all continents. I, all I, these, you know, I would all say different races. People it's, have, you know, gotten benefit yeah. from them in a so way. The, the only thing I would say but, is I don't put the Bible in a different category than Aesop's fables, right? So there's nothing about someone believing that a book that describes... I mean. Yeah, is that. Um, making a magical... Yeah, making the, it, I understand, the I'm sorry. The God belief yes, part, I right? Like, like Harry Potter did not become a better or more meaningful book because they had conventions or a theme park. Right. But I would say there's books like To Kill a Mockingbird. I'm not I'm not into literature. I know you guys are a lot smarter than I am. But there are books that mm -hmm. should be viewed more valuable because of the lessons you can learn from them. And I think the Bible, if and not just the Bible, man. I'm not. I'm telling you, I'm not a big. I yeah. don't believe Jesus was a re, was. I believe Jesus was so, a guy. I think we can I've agree. Those, but but I, the the only caveat, and then I'm sorry for for cutting across you, but we got to get to our our last caller. The only caveat is I, I would say that the merits of a book should be judged solely on its contents. Fair enough. But I think it should be, and I, I would say that, and I don't mean to but like not to disregard what you're saying, but I'm saying to add to that, I think that we should, uh, it should be respected still, even by people that don't believe it should be respected in a way that, like you said, don't, don't put it on a magic pedestal, but there's still things that can be learned. There's still valuable lessons. It's still value in it, whether it's the utmost valuable book I dis I would understand no I don't yeah. feel that way either I haven't read all of it and I don't take Christianity to be it's any more not serious than any other religion well and I don't think that I've read I, yeah, I don't think that trying. Jamie I don't think that Jamie or I are saying that there's absolutely nothing of value that you can take from any holy books I don't think any of us yeah. have ever made that well that I, position yeah right. and I so I think we can agree with the f the the fundamental conclusion of your statement but um, thank you for calling in as you learn more you know send us a message on Facebook get us on the Reddit, send us an email. I'm um, calling. We just have one more uh, caller, uh, but thank you for calling in, James. All right, and our last caller, well, yeah. Yeah, so we've got Jared in Illinois. Thank you for waiting. Jared or 